the designing cloud scale applications on Azure. So that's the topic, right? So usually when it comes to picking the right services on Azure, although there are plenty of, by the way, my name is Ilyas and I work as a technology PM in one of the software engineering group in Microsoft, right? So my team builds, my team builds prototypes, MVPs for some of the uh, top customers of Microsoft globally. So that's what we do. And we always get challenged, right? Um, think about building uh, Tesla-like cars for India. Think about building, uh, you know, scaling data pipelines, right? So we get massive amount of data uh, and we want to infer intelligence uh, as soon as the data arrives, right? So we are doing massive number of credit card transactions and we want to identify fraudulent ones, right? Uh, so those are the challenges that is tackled by our team and I'm part of that team, right? And every time when we get into building, developing, or architecting any such solutions, we always start from scratch, you know, uh, putting together the right service, choosing the right architecture for our customers, right? So that's what we do, uh, my team does at Microsoft. And likewise, uh, you guys are no different, right? So you are handling your customers. And today's business requires fast-paced solution, right? So, and hence, you also have the same set of challenges, right? So now, let's break the ice. Who want to go first? You have the mic on? Yeah. Go ahead. So I have a question regarding uh, graph database. I know uh, Cosmos supports uh, graph at a high level, but under the hood, it, it is still a document database, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so is there any plan to have a native graph database like a Neo4j or, or, or Tiger uh, as a service uh, native to Azure? As of today, we have, uh, I think, uh, we can um, use Neo4j uh, from the marketplace, mm -hmm. but again, it is uh, it, it is on infra, it is not as a core service uh, in the Microsoft. It's not a pass service. Yeah, it is not a pass service. As no, service. it is pass service, right? Right now, it, uh, right now it's, it uh, supports Gremlin API. Yeah, uh. that, that is uh, Cosmos, in Cosmos. Okay. But even the implementation of Graph is not native to that level because we have been trying to use that for one of our uh, project. Uh, so basically, I, I, work for, I work for Musk. So we were trying to create uh, something which can search the possible route between two so Gremlin API supports all that, what are you talking about? Yes. Neo4j is a different API altogether. Gremlin is Gremlin uh, supports that, yeah. but the thing is that the execution of that Gremlin, Gremlin path happens somewhere on the middle tier. Okay. And if you write a Gremlin query, which uh, will try to fetch a fetch lot of data, okay. you will end up um, consuming a lot of DTUs and- RUs. RUs, yeah. Not okay. DTUs, RUs there. Yeah. So um, is there any plan to have a native graph database, which like, which is very um, native in, in, in the implementation itself in, on Azure. I think uh, Saranya is I'm right person. I'm not an expert, to be honest. Saranya. Uh, but we have the team right here. Yeah. Did you Saranya. catch hold of those folks? There are about three folks from the Cosmos DB team right here in the conference, right? So if you stay back, probably yeah. I can connect you with them. And yeah, this yeah, could sure. be a feature request to them. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah? sure. Yeah. All right, so who wants to go next? Why is the silence? So any, any questions you want to ask, which is extremely specific also is fine. Any technical challenge you're trying to face, anything with respect to uh, the technology, it's basically asking me anything. You want me to address anything? He was asking me something, right? Can you explain that? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, just take me. Ah, come on, it's fine. You don't want to? Okay, fine, no problem. Any other questions? You have specific questions you want to ask? Mike Anga. Yeah, I'll put it white shirt. Let him do it. So this is not for the scale, uh, the cloud okay. scale. So it's like, uh, so when you start your project, mm -hmm. in the company, let's say there is a culture of Azure, mm -hmm. right? You start doing, you build your application, then there is a, you know, change in the management or the leadership, very normal. And let's say they come up and with a multi, multi cloud multi strategy, multi okay. cloud strategy, right? How as an engineering team, we should be prepared, let's say, right? I mean, 
um, so let's say 2022 the strategy was azure okay 2023 it says let's say we have another vendor as well right how as an engineering team we should cope up to that okay very realistic question <laughs> I'll take this, I'll take this. Okay, I can, I can take that. Okay. So, <clears throat> pick what is right for the customer. Sometimes it's not about and customers. Microsoft well, right? tea, I can always say Just Microsoft, Microsoft has everything that customer wants. But at the same time, um, I want to put it simply, I don't want to get into uh, a complex jargon. Do the right thing for your customer. What he's saying is, I don't have that thing. I like. Some guy likes Azure, some guy likes TCP. That's what you're saying, yeah, right? Correct. Some yes. guy has uh, AWS affinity See, over. <clears throat> customer wants agility. Customer wants cost efficient system. Customer wants a scalable solution. Customer wants a cyber secure application, right? If, if you're able to convince your management as well as your you know, customer with the right set of architecture, right solution, and if you're able to build that on Azure, well and good. If, if the competition gives you anything better, as a developer, I'd be open. As an architect, I'd be open, right? I, I'm, I'm towards meeting the customer, meeting an optimized solution that best serves the business purpose. The question Let's is, put it that way, Ilyas, right? No, the question is, what he's saying is, mm -hmm. how is engineering team? So yes, last year, the what he's saying is, last year, somebody tell us, I don't have a power to decide what cloud this. Last year, somebody told me, Azure. So this year, coming as Build a cloud neutral says, solution, simple. Yeah. Cloud Vendor agnostic solution. I think that's the session in the content in the uh, <laughs> next other to track. Cloud. Yes, yeah. yes. Next. Okay. But but this is a very valid ask. Every other organization don't want to put all the eggs in one basket. Right. Well understood. And that's why every other cloud, not just Microsoft, has a very strong hybrid story. If you build this, you can run it here. If you change your mind next year, for all good reasons, of course you could move it and. Kubernetes is a very good architecture that supports that, right? It doesn't care whether you run it on your yeah, premise, yes. your data center, competition, whichever cloud it may be, you are able to run it. And same goes true for all the data pipelines as well. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's more not really customer, it's more towards, you know, it's like top down. Yes. You know, that we need this, let's say. And we were, we didn't even, prepared our application to be multi, you know? Correct, correct. Don't start with a tool. Saranya. Don't start Please with join. a programming language, right? So I'm a Java developer, so I will do everything with Java is not a right yes. statement today. Uh, maybe 10 years back. When I was a developer, .NET developer, I'm still a .NET developer. Come over, come on, talk. Come, come, please. We had a good question. I, I held it for you. Yeah. Um, no, this, this. Come you over, want to add? Over, come over. Okay, sorry. We could stand. Who's that? We'll add one more chair. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so as a .NET no. developer, Sarah I was not able to wrap around my head okay. with anything else. So whatever challenge that was thrown at me, uh, I did everything with .NET. Whereas there were other solutions, other tools, other programming language that was better at a particular problem, right? And this is too much favoritism to one thing, right? So. Uh, the 2022 is not the time to do that, right? So go with what is right for the customer, go with the right tools for the right problem statement. And over to this question, the question was Thank about Graph TV. Support on yeah. Mike. Sorry, Mike who uh, asked that question? Mike. Inge 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 Thanks inge Mike. for asking this question. Uh, the and and have you used Cosmos database? Yes, uh, we have used and uh, actually we end up paying <laughs> two thousand dollar per day uh, oh. by by configuring it incorrectly. That I understood, and also we tried to use Graph um, Cosmos to use as a Graph database using Gremlin. We wanted to query uh, some complex uh, routes, uh, but uh, most of the time we were getting either timeout or it was. Uh, it was taking a lot of time. So my question was that, is there any plan to have a graph database as a native service, which really, like, if we run the similar kind of graph, we, we build similar kind of graph and run the queries on Neo4j Neo or Tiger, uh, they Fast perform time. very well and, and they don't time out, but if you do the same thing with the same set of data, it 
I'm like it, it most of the time it doesn't run on on Cosmos or either you will end up paying a lot of uh, uh, RUs. Okay, so you highlighted two three issues, uh, right? One issue is high RU for graph database. Uh, internal implementation is we don't store data as native graphs. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's fully interoperable with the NoSQL or previously it used to be called SQL API. And so even when you try to look at nodes and vertices and inbound and outbound and labels and properties, it's all actually an object which uh, document that is stored. Uh, so definitely we can do better than that. So unfortunately today way the Gremlin V1 stands, uh, uh, internally, there is this translation between uh, the NoSQL. So that is a known issue that I understand. Now, what can we do better through that issue? Um, uh, we are working on an Azure uh, wide graph uh, initiative uh, led by the Cosmos DB team primarily. Um, and f the bad news though is it's not ready today, right? So it's... Uh, and I know the market is looking for graph solutions uh, heavily right now. So that's something we have to accept that it's taking a bit of time. Uh, many other, like SQL has tried graphs, if you notice, many folks have tried. But uh, identifying graphs not for um, uh, what, what we call as, uh, not for data science or compute, but for uh, uh, traversals or uh, analytics graph uh, is something that uh, we are going to work. And uh, to be honest, after this session, I'd love to connect with you to get some inputs because I, uh, I can be honest, we don't have a product right now. We've developed an in-memory graph component, but then uh, the difference is how much do you want to scale out versus how much do you want to do in-memory, it's a trade-off. So I'd love to get some inputs. Before I ask the question, it's so nice that you can swiftly bring the guys, relevant guys, to answer this question, right? That's highly appreciated. Okay, I'll go to the global scale that you mentioned, no? With the original context. Um, just trying to compare with other platform vendors, Google, Amazon, they have App Mesh to work with Kubernetes. In terms of Azure, are we going to have a service mesh coming up? Is where, where it's coming up? Yeah. Like when it's coming? No. It's, all, the, it's already there, right? Which one? Where is it? Uh, service is it? Yeah. Service no, we have mm -hmm. equivalent of uh, so. Uh, equivalent you, you have, yes. Yeah, so essentially he's asking when is Azure going to support service mesh, which is outside? Mm -hmm. uh, three, four layers I can, I can try to address. One mm -hmm. layer is. Uh, essentially, what does service mesh do? It tries to orchestrate across multiple nodes mm -hmm. and not just what Azure Kubernetes services does yeah. or Azure container apps do, but mm -hmm. it tries to go beyond at the network level, packet level, transfer level and tries to do a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. Actually, Azure service fabric is our service so mesh. Uh, it Come is on. slightly compli <laughs> it is more complicated, name. Oh, yeah. the name? but uh, that's <laughs> what it is. But I think it is, uh, I would say, uh, for example, Cosmos DB sits on Azure mm -hmm. service fabric. Mm -hmm. IoT service sits, all pretty much every Azure service sits on that. But to expose that, it's very complicated. So mm -hmm. I don't think that is a right solution for outside, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for customers in mm -hmm. my view. Mm -hmm. But uh, the closest to that I have seen people use is Azure so Container Apps. Container. Yes, uh, we can explore. See, I'm, I'm working with a product company. We're looking at almost all the continents where they have users except Antarctica, right? Very heavy. This is something we are now trying Dapper, also Container Apps along with it. But I'm just looking at it like Google has Anto Service Mesh. AWS is App Mesh, when I say Istio based, right? Like you said, we want sidecars, we want service-to-service -service communication to be handled when we have, I would say, sizable number of microservices, right? And we want to scale up, global scale that you mentioned. 
that's the thing. Service fabric, I know, it comes as a comparison, but we are not practically using it that much for customers. That, that's the main thing. Um, another in relation, not directly with that, the other maybe roadmap question. GitHub Actions is picking up. I personally love the tool. Azure DevOps, I also like the tool, but now between the two, I like GitHub Actions more. So is it going to be go parallel track for some time or what is the strategy there? <laughs> The question is whether I can do a. I mean, I am. He, he likes GitHub Actions, and he says. GitHub Actions. And then Azure DevOps. He's saying, well, what should I bet on? Basically, an NDA question. No, no it's not. It's not. <laughs> Let me try. So um, these are coming from two different things, right? So Azure DevOps born in enterprise, right? So uh, it comes from TFS. Uh, uh, it has a huge history. And GitHub come, came through an acquisition, right? And they started from startup ecosystem. So uh, GitHub is loved by open source, the millions of Git repositories out there. Um, you know, Python is posted on GitHub, right? So all the famous ones on GitHub. And uh, it's up to you, right? It's up to the organization, right? So if they find it, uh, GitHub has all the features, right? So GitHub seems to be adding a lot of new security features that's more enterprise friendly, right? So if the organizations are, you know, old legacy companies and they have, I mean, I, I come from, I was with a company called ABB, which is a 100-year-old company. So they come from TFS and they find Azure DevOps seems to be a you know, right movement from TED, uh, you know, TFS to DevOps. And so they are sticking with that, right? So, uh, but there are other companies where they have both uh, uh, DevOps as well as, you know, GitHub, right? And I, I do see certain companies are completely moving to GitHub. So that's also another trend, uh, trend that I see because it has amazing capabilities like code space and, and all of that. That gives a native, um, you know, uh, work environment or development environment, which is, um, you know, just go spin up your, you know, clone your repo and you have your working environment with all the dependencies ready in few minutes, right? So that's an amazing uh, option for a startup and mid-sized company and even enterprises, right? So. Um, there's no one right answer. Which one is for who? Uh, there's nothing, right? So over a period, it might converge, and and Microsoft is happy to give more options, more than one option, to so solve. If you're choosing new, choose GitHub Actions. That's my. Yes. Yes. What is that? Yeah, it's going to battle for some time. Yeah. Maybe a long time. Azure DevOps to GitHub Actions. Again, we may not be the right person. We don't want to talk on behalf of the product. <laughs> group. Uh, GitHub is coming with GitHub Universe, and it is a virtual plus in-person event. Attend the in, uh, a virtual one. So Ask the same question. I think, yes, they, they are coming with a lot of feature announcement this time. Who's next? We got another 15 minutes. We got the um, PMs and PG folks from Cosmos DB. If you have any more questions on Cosmos DB, I think they can take it. Migration stories, any migrations? Yeah, there one question there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, we are dealing with, uh, you know, close, transport close. project. Can you keep it close? Okay. We are dealing with transport project where we will have, we will have to show the real-time traffic data on the map. That's the, you know, general requirement, I would say. The problem, what we are facing is, we are getting per minute lakhs and lakhs of inputs from different data source provider, which is containing the trans, uh, traffic information. But the problem is we, we have the road network model of your particular country. We have to map the traffic information against the road network model, which is nothing but the geospatial information. We are looking for some recommendations or the best option to use in Azure. You know, we have to make sure that the real tra real time traffic data load what we are having should be able to manage and should be able to map against this geospatial information in the short you know short span because the real time traffic data as you know it has to be updated uh, you know very quick so i just need some recommendations in the azure services i have the mic 
No, this is a typical Microsoft, Google, Amazon uh, interview question for cloud solution architects. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> this is how you get one question, given one, you are, you asked a long question, they'll give you shorter version of this question <laughs> and you will be given a whiteboard and a pen and you have to figure out first architectures of what data structures you will use and then map it to what Azure services or AWS services or Google services, depending on the interview you attend, to map what you want. So essentially what you're asking is, um, let's see, you're asking for, uh, for your mapping uh, real-time traffic information on a map using geospatial coordinates and then movement of this traffic in real-time. Yes. Is right? Yeah, so this, uh, you basically need to pick uh, various things, but uh, the most fundamental thing is what data storage will you use? Based on that, what cache, like Redis cache or any kind of caching do you want, depending on the data storage? Then is... Nailed it. She answered very well. The reason Nailed is... It. Yes. Nailed. The reason is, uh, the way we are planning to pick up is stream analytics. And as you said, we are receiving from different data source and we are making it canonicalized, or, uh, canonicalized structure of data. And then we are passing to stream analytics. In the stream analytics, we are uh, having uh, geospatial information in the reference data, and we are matching up the traffic information against the reference data, and then it will be going to the downstream systems or downstream components. I think we are going in the right direction. Thanks, thanks for the interest. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Gatin. I'm actually in my college second year at Anna University. I'm doing blockchain development for the past two, past like one year. I'm actually in doubt, having doubt like how can I uh, like bring in any of the Azure things and relate to my blockchain development. So is there any possibility that in what space should I explore in DevOps so that I can integrate my blockchain stuffs to it? Have you considered Azure blockchain? No, I didn't look into it. I'm just asking you, how can I just explore into Azure and Microsoft related products? Uh, how in general, how do you explore? Yeah, in general. Well, Azure yeah. blockchain is the right thing. So how can I relate blockchain to it? Is there any way? I'm completely into blockchain development. So I'm asking how can I get any of the tools and integrate it? There, there is there something called else? complete. I mean, you can actually create an Azure blockchain. Okay. It will create you ex a SQL, even grid, those VMs, those contracts. It will create and give it to you. It will be exposed in the API. Okay. You can consume that directly. That's the easiest way to put it. Okay. Okay. Or you can get a VM, build on your own, and then do it. That's like a long start. Uh, you have any idea about the SQL ledger? Even I want to have a question. SQL ledger? SQL ledger? Yeah, I just had that speech by... Okay. Uh, I just heard it. Okay, so there is something called what she said is Azure blockchain. Okay. It actually does all the works for you. Okay. Pass service. Yes, yes, it is. And in fact, it, uh, it connects to other Azure services also. Mm, even, I know mm. it from the point because we were trying to build a connector to Cosmos DB for storing. Okay. Basically, your box chain are all ledger data. It's all flat files, right? It's not structured per se data. So you they store it in some hard drive like C drive, V drive, where you store your data, and then you validate it. Uh, so Azure blockchain does two, three things. One is, as I said, it connects to other Azure services. Second thing is it also helps to align with industry use case alignments. Like you're doing blockchain for RTGS transfer. That is, if you look at uh, financial services, blockchain is super important for them because uh, services like KYC know your customer. They don't know, for example, uh, one bank uh, Indian bank will not talk to HSBC, Will each one will have their own know your, so if someone's taking a loan in one bank, how much do you know that are they taking in other banks or they have to go apply and give all the KYCs to another. So there's a lot of those uh, things that the blockchain uh, solves and these things on Azure platform, they've given you templates to do that on Azure blockchain. So maybe you can. Use yeah, that. sure. Thank you so much. Okay, we can take one last question. And if there are uh, Azure Cosmos DB lovers, uh, users, stickers. we have some stickies for your laptops. You could grab it from us. Yeah? You have a last question. Yeah, yeah stickies, yes. We have plenty of Lots them. Of I think we can grab. 
go ahead go, go ahead sir hello uh, this is regarding i am question okay so uh, i did uh, i worked on i am long back so the integration between cosmos and hashicorp vault the privilege id is we were not able to vault into cosmos db that is cosmos i privilege id is we were not able to integrate with hashicorp vault so it's it's now fixed or what is the current status can you repeat the question it wasn't very clear okay I there is a privilege id audio audio was it clear sorry okay. is we have a cosmos privilege id is right you have id is like oracle a privilege id are back uh, role based access yes, control yeah, and cosmos yeah, yeah. yes we do yes yeah. it's uh, like vaulting vaulting those id is last question then okay last question. into a hashicorp vault it's a tool hashicorp vault is a tool where we vaulting those id is it's a security based question okay so like if the id is the password will be rotated like A privilege ID means password will be rotated automatically. Sure, sure. Ah, okay. Got it. Privilege so, ID. Privilege ID. Okay. 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 So e, previously the Cosmos privilege IDs were not able to integrate with the Hashicorp. We were not doing that before. Correct. Yeah. What is the status now? Okay. The question is: Are we generating? Uh, uh, no. In Cosmos DB, at least today, uh, we do not uh, regenerate your keys. the customer will have to regenerate their keys that's what that's what i'm telling so the ashikop vault is it will regenerate the keys but we are not able to integrate like sql if you have oracle id is privilege id is we can integrate the ashikop vault or com vault it will automatically regenerate the passwords yes yes so we integrate to azure key vault and we are able to directly uh, connect on privileges that is possible but i don't think we have privileged identities yet i can check if uh, okay. that's something important we don't sure. have that Thank you. Okay, that's it.